This is Stay Paid, the marketing podcast that gives listeners a competitive edge to stay motivated, find inspiration, and discover proven real-world tactics from some of the best marketers across the nation. Welcome to another Silver Dollar episode of Stay Paid. My name is Joshua Stike. And I'm Luke Akery. And we wanted to take a minute here in this content theme month of branding and yes. becoming unforgettable and everything because we run a business called Reminder Media. That's who brings you Stay Paid Podcast. That's who pays for these mics and these yeah. ear headphones and these <laughs> Somebody and has to pay for it. You know? Someone has to pay for it. And one of the questions we get more than anything is about one of our products, which are branded magazines. Yeah. And we use it as a relational tool for our clients to be able to send to their clients to drive repeat and referral business. But people often ask the question, well, why send a branded magazine? Yes. And that's what we want to kind of get into, spend maybe 10, 15 minutes talking about, yeah. about that. Yeah, because you've maybe seen some of our ads or you've heard about the concept of basically sending your own magazine. And I want to clarify that. I think for a lot of people, they hear magazine yeah. and they think taking out an ad in a magazine. Because yeah, yeah. traditionally, that's what you you did. You, yeah. you pay for an ad and you're next to a bunch of competitors or whatever it is. No, this is your very own magazine. Yep. It's 48 pages pages. It's a coffee table quality magazine. So imagine like a Better Homes and Garden, an Architectural Digest. So it's actually a quality magazine. You're the only business featured. So it features you and then a ton of great content that your clients will love. So like our real estate agents, we have basically a magazine called Good to Be Home. Yep. And it's it's like a Better Homes and Garden and it's their magazine and we design it and we ship it for them. We take care of everything. But the reason why I would say, number one, that you should use a magazine is actually for the reason you just stated, which is people People go, you know, why would I do something like that? Because I normally do emails. I normally do postcards to direct trip on my response clients. Direct response type. Right. Yeah. I, I normally want to generate do a lead things. directly from this mailing. The yeah. magazine is super unique. Yep. It is a super unique touch point. And if you think about marketing, right, one of the problems with marketing is things get noisy. Yeah. So think about social media right now. Everybody's starting to post content on social media. So now your content is not as effective. Everybody sends emails. So now your emails are not as effective, right? Nobody, or I shouldn't say nobody because we have thousands of clients, but very few people are sending magazines compared to the majority of people who are sending emails and postcards. So the impact that it makes when it actually is received stands out and yeah. standing out in marketing is key. But that really leads to the bigger point of this. Well, before you go into the bigger yeah. point, because I want to, I want to, reinforce that point with actual results that we've gotten from oh, readers yeah, of the great. magazine. Yeah. So we hire a third party firm called GFK MRI. They're like the number one magazine or publication auditor in the country. And what they do is they, um, they solicit feedback from the recipients of the magazine and uh, they collect all of that data into survey results. And when we asked recipients to rank their branded magazines along with other direct mail pieces or other marketing marketing pieces. We compared it to postcards, flyers, brochures, newsletters, emails, and calendars. Between those last ones that I read, other than the brand and magazine, there was only like half a percentage point actually separating them in terms of their ranking of value. So the consumer only saw about half a percentage half point. Half between the difference of, I think, newsletters was the second highest, and then um, I can't remember which one was the lowest. It might have been calendars or emails, but it was like the lowest. Only half a percentage point. The magazines ranked a full one and a half percentage points above yeah. newsletters, yeah. which was the second highest. That, so the crazy. value perception yep. of the recipients is so much higher than any of the other marketing, which is where you're saying it helps you stand out, That's which the, is the first and for, foremost thing you have to do. It's the bigger point in it all. It's like not only is it unique. But people perceive it as a gift. Mm -hmm. They perceive much more value in it. And here's why that's so effective. They don't throw it away. Yeah. Like think about you're a consumer. When your car dealership sends you a postcard, what do you do with it? When your furniture company it sends you- It doesn't hit you at the right time yeah. with the right coupon or special offer. It's called lottery marketing, right? Yeah. Still works, but it's a lot lower of an effect, right? Yeah. The magazine works so phenomenally well because people perceive it as a gift. They pull it out of their mailbox. And if you send it to the people we coach you to send it to, which is your sphere, your past clients, they know you already. So there's this buzz that happens. I pull the magazine out and I see Josh on the cover of the magazine. I go, oh my gosh, Josh has his own magazine or Josh is on this magazine <laughs> and it gets people to actually pay attention more and it lives in the home on the coffee table, over the bedside half, table. Over half the recipients said that they keep it on an average of four weeks and 20% in addition on top of that said that they keep it 10 plus weeks, which means they're actually filing yeah, it's a it billboard away in your future home. reference. And think about that in terms of shelf life. Think about that in terms of branding power, right? The more they see you every single day on their coffee table, the more they think of you, the more they think of you, the more they're going to refer you or yeah. 
use you again and not the competition. Which leads into the very first point, which is it's relational, right? Yes. The branded magazine is a relational tool, not a transactional tool. Yeah, and I think that's one of the key value props that uh, the magazine gives is that most of the time we market transactionally. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you're an agent, you're just listed, just sold, market reports. They're good things to have, but if you only do that, people see you as a, a service, a transaction, a business. The magazine is actually filled with content that your clients just enjoy about life. Food, travel, art, outdoor things, home design, things they will engage with. And because it's more relational, they actually perceive it more as a gift and it gives you the opportunity to get more known, more liked, and that leads you to ultimately being more trusted because the magazine gives gives you opportunities to get trusted as well. And I think we've said this before, but like this, we're talking about branded magazines. Obviously, it's one of the things that we offer. If you can find something that does those same things, oh, please let us know. Mail pieces, let us know, especially for the price of being yeah. able to send. I out. tell people all the time, we're not a magazine company. Uh, we produce millions Correct. of magazines, and it we have designers, tool. editors. We're a marketing yeah. company that has found a personalized magazine to be insanely effective in yeah. driving referral business and repeat business. Yeah. You know, I mentioned building trust, which is kind of like. Um, Um, a third point for us on the value proposition. You as a business, you want to build relationships because it's the currency of business. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? You got to get known. You got to get them to like you. You got to build that rapport. But you also need them to trust you as being the authority on your subject matter. So if you're an insurance agent, how do they see you as the subject matter expert that there's no one who knows more about insurance than Luke? There's really three ways we find to do this in marketing super effectively. One is through showcasing your accolades. Showcase what you've done. So for us, we showcase things like we We've worked with 100,000 clients. We've been in business for 18 plus years. We've been on the Inc. 5000 list four years in a row. We showcase accomplishments that we have because it makes you believe, well, Luke and Josh kind of know what they're doing, right? They've had experience. That's one thing you can showcase on your magazine. You could showcase on your cover or on your tear out cards. You could showcase to people your accolades. And if you're a new agent and you don't have any accolades, you join under a company, use their accolades. So if you're with a Keller Williams, a Century 21 in Allstate, they have have accolades, use those accolades. What's the, what's, the, um, what's the ad that your brother runs where he mentions, he just kind of subtly mentions yeah. the 300 homes. Like, Thank you to my <laughs> uh, 300 families that I was right, able to yeah. help this year, right? So he's showcasing, Which is a little you know, subtle. I sold 300 yeah. homes this yeah. year. But it's a a great way to build trust. You got to be careful of doing that all the time, though, because it's humble bragging. The second way you can build trust is through showcasing what your clients say about you. Yes. Right. So when we get our clients to say stuff about us, it's a lot more powerful than just we say something. Right. We had Tim Garrity on our podcast. He's a broker owner of Copper Hill in Philadelphia. Not a client of ours. We had him on the podcast. Well, we built a relationship and he says, Luke, I'm interested in your magazine, but I want to try it before I let you introduce it to my 40 agents or so. Mm -hmm. He goes and sends this out. We then go for lunch at Founding Farmers, and he literally sits down and goes, Luke, my magazine said, and I got to tell you, 23% of my list reached out to me Crazy. because yeah. of the magazine. Yeah. And he goes, dude, that type of response is insane. That is so much more powerful than me saying I've worked with 100,000 clients, I've been in business, X, Y, Z, my accolades. Him saying that story, and we have hundreds of testimonials, showcase your testimonials in your magazine. So if you have client stories, case studies, things you've done, feature those clients on the back cover of your magazine as a way to build trust. And then the third way to build trust in your marketing, this is the hardest to do, but the most effective is through educational content, Mm -hmm. right? On your subject. So Josh and I, we do this podcast. This is a form of educational content. We want to be known as authorities in sales and marketing. So we give away free marketing and sales educational content consistently. And you guys listen. Yeah. Right? So it raises our credibility. You can do the same thing on your magazine. Put on the back cover of your magazine the top three things buyers need to be aware of if they're buying in 2023. Put on your magazine, hey, this is what you need to know about your life insurance. Whatever business you're in. And we have in, all of these designs available. Like yeah, we yeah, have these templates. things pre-designed for you in our branded magazine. So you can put yeah. educational content there. So now they're getting a gift from you that stands out and it's unique. They are getting content that they will enjoy and engage with, but at the same time, you're showcasing your authority on your subject matter that if they ever need anything in your business, they should come use yeah. you and not the competition. And again, it's it's relational from the standpoint of those that 23% of Tim's list that reached out to him, <clears throat> 23 or 29. Yeah, I think it was 23%. 23%. Yep. It wasn't like, hey, here's a deal for you, or here's right, a referral correct. for you. It's building that relationship that over time will lead to that, that deal for your business. Here's some results from the survey itself that we actually 
actually just got this back in. So we've ran this survey three times over the last uh, six or eight years. Something like that. This is like the most recent one. 33% of people said they were prompted to refer their professional because they received the magazine from them. 69% were influenced to actually conduct repeat business with their professional because of the magazine. And I think one of the cooler uh, stats here is 85% actually appreciate their professional more because they send them the magazine. And again, it's because it's content that anybody can relate to. It's not all about, there's pieces about you and your business, but it's not all about you and your business. You can read it at any point. People spend on average 45, at least 45 minutes reading it. Some people spend up to two hours crazy, yeah. reading through the magazine. And they're spending that time uh, uh, enjoying the content. And then ultimately they appreciate you more because you yeah. sent them. Something well, like I that. send the magazine to our 300 employees, right? I have my own list of thousands of, of relationships. I send it to, but every I, time it comes in the mail, my kids go, dad, look, it's Luke, yeah. your podcast friend. <laughs> <laughs> but my wife literally made the raspberry banana oatmeal cookies the other day from the magazine. Not like I didn't tell her, Hey, look at my magazine or anything like that. She Sounds literally amazing. just enjoyed. Oh, they were great. <laughs> they were fantastic. Her and my daughter, Evie made it. But the reason why there's an appreciation because um, we hear testimonials all the time with our recipe cards on the tarot cards, yeah. you can make them whatever you want. They don't have to be recipes, but that type of content is what people engage with. Yeah. And then they associate that experience with you and the fact that you gave that to them. Yeah, we just had someone on our webinar last week say that they have a five-couple supper club now, and they always make AL, American Lifestyle recipes, and all five couples are their clients yeah. now. It's like that. that's how business is done is through <laughs> relationships. One of the last points I'll give, because I know we're coming close on time here, is that the magazine, you know, why should you have your own magazine for your business? Because it also gives you an incredible opportunity for your partnerships. Yeah. Right? So if you are in real estate or insurance or one of these service-based businesses, you have partnerships that are synergistic but non-competitive. So a real estate agent has a lender, has a title company, has an inspection company they use. All these people you could put in your magazine. You can cross promote. So if I'm a financial advisor, I can go to the estate planning attorney and feature that estate planning attorney on the back cover of my magazine. If you want, you can have those people even chip in for the cost. Yeah. But but you literally can feature them. It builds rapport with that person and that influence they have on their database. Now you can connect to their people and they can connect to yours and you can grow together. Yeah. We had this incredible thing happen in COVID where, you know how restaurant owners, restaurants were being hit hard. Well, yeah. our clients started to use the tear out cards of the magazine to partner with local restaurant owners and feature their restaurant in their magazine on the tear out card. They do things like free appetizers, stuff like that. And it was an incredible way, not only to give back to the restaurant, they build the relationship with the restaurant owner, but at the end of it all, they also got an item of value that's in their magazine now being sent to their database. Yeah. Charitable organizations are another idea oh, of who yeah. to partner with, especially in your community. Each year, we even have a charity special edition for all of our magazines uh, where, you know, when people sign up, we'll actually give to charity and, and then we'll, we'll, I think, double what, what, um, what the portion of those proceeds go yeah. towards the charity. But that's another opportunity for you to jump in. And if you're partnered with the local charity, which we highly recommend that you do, just from, I think we talked about it on our on our local expert uh, podcast a few weeks ago, this idea of you want to be known in the community. One of the ways to do that is to get out there and support local charities. You can partner with them and feature them in your magazine as well. And you can have your own 48 page coffee table publication designed and delivered to your clients for $4,000. Yes, no, $4, it's not $4,000. <laughs> How much is it? It's got to be 4,000 a copy. It's like QVC now. And we can do one better. Now you can literally do it all for less than a Hallmark card. So if you've been to Walmart, CVS, one of those places recently, pick up a Hallmark card. It's five, six bucks, sometimes seven dollars without postage. You still got to write in it, take it to the mailbox. Ours is literally four dollars forty nine cents. Shipping included, designed and delivered. You don't have to order a thousand of these. The yep. minimum order is literally only fifty. And the magazines. people you send it to are exclusive to you. Nobody yeah. else can send to them. Yeah, so that protects you and makes sure it always is perceived as a gift as your magazine. But that's what people are blown away of. Is like, wait, I can have my own forty eight page coffee table magazine 
for less than what a Hallmark card would cost me to send. Yeah. And that is what I think has made this so successful over 18 years is that this is something that's perceived as a gift, but is cost effective enough to do at scale. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. If you're interested in sending out your own branded magazine, uh, we actually have a special offer for stay paid listeners. So you can see the samples, you can see what each one looks like. There's four different uh, titles that we have now that you can choose from. Uh, we have a special offer for stay paid listeners over at staypaidpodcast.com slash magazine. So head on over to staypaidpodcast.com slash magazine to check that out and take advantage of that. If you uh, like this episode and want to support your show uh best way is to share this episode with a friend you can also head on over to apple podcast drop us a five-star review along with a comment and we will read it here on the show now i this little behind the scenes this is the second time we're recording this you guys have already heard this dad joke but it's so good it is a good dad joke yeah. you can you can <clears throat> the reason why we're recording this the second time is because we recorded it too and the audio didn't take this <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of static electricity in this office, and apparently, <laughs> apparently that shot the, the yeah, soundboard, and we lost the... Uh, but what do you see? Uh, what do you do if you see a fireman? You put it out, man. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. Man, Ethan is an good. actor. It he's was actually, a better he's the actually second a time. theater actor, so he's good for the... Yeah. That was a he great makes you feel good about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to get a hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com, or you can find us on uh, social media. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, I'm Luke Acree, and we just appreciate so much you guys being fans of our show, listening to our show, and we want to provide as much value as possible. Obviously, we would love for you to check out Reminder Media and see what we do, and you to try out your own magazine. But regardless, the action item from this episode is you must find a way to create impact and keep in touch with your database. The majority of business comes from referrals. And if you don't keep in touch, you're missing out on opportunity. So that is your action item. Look at how you're keeping in touch with your database. And do you have something that is consistently going out that is impactful, that's relationship driven and not transactional? And if you don't, make that happen. Remember the difference between top producers and mediocre producers in every business is top producers take action. Take action on that today.